Well, hello there. Thank you for joining us here at Coolest Life. My name is Tony, and I'm here to today to talk to you about masonry and why did I join, and uh, what are some of the things I wanted to accomplish, and why am I still a mason, and uh, maybe even talk about some of the things I have accomplished as a mason, um, and uh, kind of go into a little more detail about that, uh, and maybe even dispel a few rumors about masonry that you might not have heard. So come along with us, or with me, in this time. <laughs> as you've just entered the coolest life, Masonic Edition. Well, first off, let's get started. Uh, I want to let you know that I was born at a very young age. Let that one sink in. <laughs> so, uh, but no, when I... I, I I got involved in uh, fraternities back in college. I was involved in a, a college fraternity, and um, uh, I really enjoyed it. And when I got out of college, of course, after you get out of college and you're in a fraternity, you miss that camaraderie. A lot of people say they feel the same thing about the military while they're in the military, especially when you're a certain unit. I will say the military is tough even after 20 years because you come together for three years with a group of people in the military, and then you guys kind of, these people kind of leave, then a few more people leave, then another group comes in. And it's hard to really get those long lasting relationships in the military. It just is. You can have some, it's possible. Don't, don't get me wrong there. I was in the military, but you, it's tough to really build a, a, a long lasting relationship because of the fact people, people PCS, which is called a permanent change station. You basically leave after so many years. So you get to some place and, and you know you're going to be there three years, but the guy next to you who you're developing a relationship has already been there a year. So you get to know him about two years and maybe his family, and then all of a sudden he departs and you're there another year and you're meeting someone else's family that comes in. So my point there, there is still a camaraderie, a, uh, a sense of uh, things that you've been through together that has brought you together uh, and keeps you together as a, as a military unit. Uh, so in the military, uh, you all have basic training and tech school and those things. So you you get a bond with people. Okay, so anytime people are, are involved in a uh, even a sport in high school or um, a professional sport, they get that bond with those teammates. It's the same type of thing that you get in the military. And it's the same type of thing you can get in masonry or in a fraternity, which is what masonry is. Um, I want to say that uh, I want to start kind of start with that a little bit about masonry is a fraternity. It is not a religion. Let me try to say that. Let me say it one more time in case you missed it and you don't have rewind on your on your video. It is not a religion. We do not worship any one god or anything like that. I will say this: there is a uh, there is a basics toward masonry, and it is you must believe in a higher power, and you must be a monotheist. You can't be a believer in the wind god, the sun god, the earth god, like a lot of us uh, say uh, American Indian tribes or Native Americans believe. They believe in several different gods in some of their religions. Or if you're a, a, a polytheist and, you know, any kind of polytheist, you, you cannot be a mason. Okay. And one of the reasons is, is that we take oaths just like, there's another one I wanted to dispel, just like the oaths of office for a politician or the oath of a, of, a, of a fireman or a doctor or a lawyer. They all take oaths. We do the same thing in masonry. No difference. So I will say this. To, uh, I, I want to point that out. Uh, some people say, um, I would never be a mason because they take oaths. Well, I guess you would never be a doctor or a lawyer or in the military because we took an oath there too, I assure you, because I was in the military. We, we took an oath, okay, uh, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic. So, uh, we take oaths. Okay, so no difference here, no difference. Um, so when I joined Masonry, why did I join? I wanted to be a shrine clown, first and foremost. Uh, as I got into Masonry, I realized that there was a lot more to it than just being a Shriner. Um, uh, I joined Masonry in uh, 2012, I became a Master Mason. I I became what they call raised to the sublime degree of the Master Mason. So I was raised in 2013. I became Master of a Lodge in five years later in 2018. I became Master of a Second Lodge in 2000, 
19 uh, one across town uh, our community uh, which is what I wish a lot of more uh, uh, would do which this is bonus material bonus bonus material okay bonus material is why do so many northern lodges go dark in the summer it makes no sense to me you now most of your lodges have air conditioners so you can't use that as an excuse well we get busy doing summer things and so do we in every other state in the country i assure you we get busy doing other things but you make time for masonry how long is it really going to take you to go to a meeting three hours of your entire month you can't have an open meeting for three lousy hours of an entire month those of you who, are, who say, well, it's been our tradition. Well, time out. Stop that. A lot. We used to drink out of wells in the, uh, in, in the fields, too. We don't do that anymore because we have running water coming to our house. So why pull water out of a well? Things change. You should change, too. I don't think any lodge... There's a dog coming to see me. I don't think any lodge should come uh, um, be a... Uh, uh, go dark in the summer. I just don't. It, it makes zero sense. There's another dog. Hey, pup. <laughs> this is rude <laughs> but uh she comes and visits us every now and then and uh, that was brinks uh or banks i should say anyway <laughs> uh that's what happens when you live in a, an rv park like i do right now i'm up here in south dakota but i digress <clears throat> so let me say uh so as i mentioned i joined uh masonry in order to be a shrine clown but i realized once i got involved there's a lot more to do than just be a shrine clown uh, I joined a regular Blue Lodge and uh, moved up through the ranks, became master, as I mentioned, of two lodges. Uh, when you move up through the ranks, you become uh, different positions and you had different duties. One of them is uh, making sure that everybody gets fed for their dinner. Basically, you're, in most jurisdictions, the uh, junior warden will be in charge of that. Not necessarily the junior warden has to be the cook. The junior warden is just in charge of making sure that it happens. That's the key. Um, then you become senior warden, junior warden, or then you become senior warden and you move on into a, a, the master position, which is basically the, the president of the uh, organization. And you do everything like fundraisers, uh, brother appreciations, um, give out awards. Like we, uh, one of our lodges, we always did a, um, um, it may be teacher appreciation or uh, uh, public servant appreciation. Those are great because they give you a chance to give awards to people outside of masonry and to do it publicly maybe even at their workplace which is a great place to publicize masonry itself so uh that's always the thought um but anyway i moved up into masonry and um while i was in while i was in line to become a master i joined the scottish rite and became the uh, general secretary of our valley which is actually a pretty big position um and also joined the uh, i was a vice president of our local shrine club and I tried to get involved with a couple of different units involved in our shrine, uh, which uh, typically involved a parade and circuses and that sort of thing. Um, then I got involved with um, York Rite, uh, which was uh, the um, uh, chapter council commander. And I've got videos on all of those. I'll put them in the links links below. You can check out those other videos uh, links. So, but. Uh, I enjoyed that because every time you join an organization like that, the, the appendant bodies, you get a different kind of bonding with those brothers, that camaraderie that you had while you were in sports clubs in college or high school. And so those were some of the more, I had to get rid of that sound, sorry. Those are more of the uh, ways that you bond with brothers. Um, and you have a, um, and you do, and each one of those organizations has its own initiation. Shrine's got one, York, York Rite's got one, um, the uh, Eastern Star, um, the um, all those dependent bodies of initiation. And what the initiation does is it is it bonds you with that with the other members so that you have like experiences, just like basic training in the military. So. So through all those experiences, it's what we call the brotherhood of, uh, of masonry. Um, one of the things I wanted to say about that is, so what keeps me going in masonry? I've become a master. I rose up, grew up through the ranks of the other organizations. Um, the places to go would be um, managing the state organization, for example. 
uh, enshrined. You want to be, you want to become the potentate, which is the president of the local shrine club. So that, or not, not local shrine club, but the, but the local shrine, uh, I guess, temple, I guess what you would say. Um, or in York, right, you want to become part of the uh, grand commandery uh, for the, a particular um a particular state or jurisdiction. Uh, and the same thing with Scottish Rite. You want to rise up through uh, and become uh, the different positions within your own valley. And then maybe you can do some of the different positions in the national organization. Because there's a national organization to include one at Shrine. There's different things you can do to progress uh, if you want to progress. Don't have to, but if you desire it, you can. And obviously in the Blue Lodge, you can progress up through the ranks and, and join the Grand Lodge and become a steward and a, 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 a warden and those different positions. And of course, one day Grand Master. Uh, those are appointed positions and in most jurisdiction, it is, a, um, um, it is a progressive line. So you have to get appointed somewhere like third Grand Steward and then you move up. You essentially stay in line unless you do something drastically bad that gets you kicked out of the, the line or maybe even masonry or you do something that uh, uh, you decide you want don't want to do it anymore and you want to step out and that happens it doesn't happen very often that someone voluntarily steps out uh, but it can happen so there's those choices but those are definitely things that I want to do uh, I will say this uh, me being on the road the last two and a half years it's tough to grow up in any of those organizations because I'm I'm on the road it's hard to hold a position because when you hold a position, you then have to attend those monthly meetings or quarterly meetings or whatever they are. And it's tough to do that if you're four states away. <laughs> so I guess if money was no object, I could fly in for meetings, huh? But, um, and also, uh, I actually demitted from uh, York Wright while I was on the road because I found out my first year I wasn't attending anything. It didn't make any sense for me to pay dues for something that I can't, that I can't be a part of and be active in. It just does, didn't. Um, while I'm on the road, I have been, I have attended many uh, Scottish Rite meetings from different jurisdictions. I have attended many um, uh, shrine meetings from different jurisdictions. So that that part's been beneficial. So I'm glad I continue to pay dues for those organizations. But I just can't, I wouldn't, even if I joined Grotto, which I, I may join in another two years down in Florida, when we get back down to Florida, maybe uh, I may join Grotto, but I can't see joining it now. For example, where I'm at in South Dakota, I don't know that there is, even is a grotto organization. Because not every jurisdiction has those organizations. Over the Amaranth might be one of those. Eastern Star might be a little stronger in some jurisdiction, a little less stronger in others. Most jurisdictions are going to have York Rite, they're going to have Shrine, and they're going to have a Scottish Rite. So those are the three main ones I'm involved in. Of course, like as I said, York Rite, I, I demitted from, so technically I'm not a member of York Rite anymore. I hope that I can reapply um, when I get down to Florida or maybe even back into Columbus, Georgia, where I'm from, and uh, join back up with those organizations because I do enjoy them, and uh, but I just can't attend or be a positive impact or support where we're at now. So masonry is different. It just is. Uh, there, there's so many levels to it. And uh, there are organizations that you can join that you can move up to the ranks. What we call the animal clubs. Lions, moose, elk. You know the group. Nothing wrong with those organizations. They do great work. Uh, they're not a fraternity. A fraternity is men only. It just is. It's not a sorority. It's a fraternity. We have women's groups within uh, masonry called uh, the uh, Order of the Eastern Star. We have uh, groups, uh, Order of the Amaranth. There's different ones that women can join. And women are in charge of those, especially the Eastern Star. But in, in a fraternity like masonry, there are only men. And it's a fraternity. Um, uh, so there are... Uh, and also the difference, I think, in this organization and others is we have an initiation, unlike some of the others. VFW, there is no initiation. Um, uh, what's the other organization? Um, anyway, there's other organizations, veterans organizations and, that you can join. And they're great organizations. There's a thing wrong with them. They're not a fraternity. 
they're just not uh, so that makes it makes it different it makes masonry special um, there is one other fraternity that's somewhat like us which is called the odd fellows which has got nothing to do with masonry but there is an organization but i will say this from the visits that i've made odd fellows are shrinking dramatically and i would say in the next five to ten years they will fold completely other some states don't have any odd fellows at all i'm like zero uh other even big states have only got like five chapters so masonry is alive and well there are definitely some areas and districts that are shrinking in numbers but i think we're going to hit a plateau and uh, pretty much and uh it's going to level out and people will, will get to want to join organizations like masonry um uh, uh, real soon and want to move along i will say this you got to have a meeting in order to have initiations it's another one of my things about that i i hate when 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 brothers make excuses to go dark or not have a meeting at minimum you can practice opening and closing at minimum you can say our next meeting we're going to have an opening and by the way we're going to practice master mason degree in the middle of our meeting why not why not do a practice of of a degree in the middle of your meeting um so and there's also there's so many other degrees that you could be practicing there's a there's a a, a ladies degree that, uh to uh, uh welcome your welcome your ladies who support you there's different different programs like that that you could be doing and you could be practicing the opening installation of officers you could be practicing that so that someone from your lodge can do the installation instead of getting a district deputy to come in and do the installation. I'm just saying there's, there's lots of things you could be doing, uh, especially as far as Masonic education. You can get guys like me who can come to your lodge and do a Masonic teaching about something that we do in our district. So you can compare and contrast to what, what goes on in other districts compared to here. Now me, whenever I go to a, a great thing about traveling, is sometimes I will go to a lodge and say, hey, can I do your Masonic education for the day? And a lot of times, I will say 90% of the times, they'll say, yeah, absolutely. We'll, what are Masonic education we had for today? We'll push to our next meeting. So I'll come in and I'll talk about some of the different experiences I've had at visiting other jurisdictions. Not just my own, but other jurisdictions. Uh, of the different things that happen and how they, how they preamble around the lodge and the different things that they do and where the lesser lights sit. And I talk about little, little things masonically speaking that i can't talk about on a video like this there's a lot that i can say that i will not do a video like this primarily because i took an oath and says i will not talk about our secrets and to tell you the truth our secrets in masonry are basically our handshakes and passwords we don't talk about that i don't get into that i'll never get into that it is is most of it uh some of our ritual work is somewhat secretive a lot of it you can find especially different jurisdictions you can find it online and go google it but you know what i'm not talking about it here i'm just saying draw that line right there so maybe uh one day i'll come to your, uh, your jurisdiction and be able to visit your lodge and i hope you hopefully you'll say yes and let me do a, a video i will say coming up I will say I uh, haven't done a, a video recently, partly because in the year that I'm in here in South Dakota and wa near Wyoming, uh, they go dark in July and August. And yeah, you know how that rubs me the wrong way. I hate it when they go dark. A lot of lodges, not all, but a lot of lodges, I would say more than half of them go dark. So I can't visit them. Uh, and I want to. Um, I am about ready to go to Spearfish, South Dakota this uh, this week. And next week I'm going to I will do my best to attend a lodge meeting in a Sturgis. So I'm hoping to do videos and do uh, different things with that one there. So uh, future plans down the road, hope to go down to um, work my way toward Vegas. So I hope to go sit in a lodge in Nevada and I will be spending a week in Utah. So I hope to go visit a lodge in Utah as long as they're not dark in the month of August or I guess September they'll be, I doubt they will be. Uh, it'll be September and October is when I'll be visiting there. I'll be in October, I'll be in Nevada. And, uh, or Nevada, Nevada, whatever. Uh, one of the, one of those three states I'll be in. And then, um, uh, I will be in, uh, in, and go on down to Arizona. Definitely going to sit in some lodges in Arizona. I assure you this winter to include some lodges in California. Maybe just maybe if I can find some English speaking lodges in Mexico, I want to go down to Mexico 
and you'll get some videos for that. So stay tuned for those. Check out the playlist that says um, Masonic Lodges from around the country. So uh, I'll, I'll be posting those there really soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and then you be sure to like and subscribe. I can always use all the likes and all the subscribers I possibly can. Likes help it get up to other people. Subscribers help, well, kind of put money in my pocket, sort of. Really, views do. So definitely, I want to encourage you, if you ever visit, view one of my videos, just watch it to the entire end. Skip through the, the uh, commercials if you have to. I don't know what commercials they put on there. YouTube determines all that, so I don't want to call about that. But uh, appreciate you being here this long, and uh, hopefully I'll see you down the road. Cause I'm just out here living the coolest life, Masonic Edition. Mm -hmm.